he talk about? Taking off your diaper, right? Yes. That was what he was talking about. And mm -hmm. I usually teach lessons concerning, um, let's see, what I teach lessons concerning sins, uh, what sins are. So, did you get the handout from man's, um, the guilt of mankind from Romans 1? No. You didn't. Mm hmm Okay. Which, okay, so, um, that one talked in reference to the guilt of mankind and it, and it discussed what sins were. Okay. So, when we're talking and trying to help Different. individuals, yes, to lead people to Christ, um, the thing of the the thing that some people need to understand is what are sins, and then to learn um, what's in their life that's lacking concerning what God wants for them. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to be traveling in the Bible because uh, um, let's see. Did Pastor go over? Did we? Were y'all here on? No, we weren't here last Wednesday. Um, did pastor ever start teaching sins we accept? Okay, so these must be my notes then. Um, Y'all weren't there then, okay? So I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch on his lessons then. <clears throat> All right. But what I will do then, um, instead of um, going too deep into uh, the guilt of mankind because I've been teaching on that. I'm just going to work on the part that deals with um, with the sin and the different words that the um, the lesson was talking about, and then also the results of sin. Because uh, first and foremost, what is it that you need from God right now? What questions do you have concerning um, salvation and why? Um, you want salvation. We, sh we should put it like that. What is it of God that you want to understand and how willing are you um, to accept what the scripture says? Because a lot of times people will give you information that deals with the church doctrine. I don't want to do that. I want to find out. Looks like somebody's coming. I want to find out what is it that you are thinking about and why. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Glad about that. Do you have your Spanish Bible with you today? You're supposed to have it then because I want to be able to make sure that Brother Ray is... Um... All right. So, okay, let's, 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 let's deal with it like that. So now, whenever, if I was going to teach you this lesson, The Guilt of Mankind, I was going to read the scriptures to you. Um, and then you were going to be telling me, well, Sister Brooks, I don't know what those words are. And then I would have to explain what those words are. But I want to know the Praise depth. The Praise the Lord. I'm glad to see you today. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Come on, stop. Amen. Bien. Bien, all right. Great, Hello. great. Yeah. Hello. Get in there. Right. Mm -hmm. Get in there. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You got your Spanish Bible with you today? Yes, ma'am. All right. Because we want to definitely read um, read it um, in Spanish as well so that Brother Ray will be on the same level with the rest of us. Okay, so what questions do you have regarding um, salvation before we even start even opening up? The scriptures. What is it that you want from God? Let's put it like that. <clears throat> For me personally, uh -huh. I want to know. Uh -huh. I mean, I know when I was much younger, I went to church when I was a little girl. Uh -huh. And then when we moved, we stopped. When, and then I went with my oldest brother uh -huh. and him and his wife. And then that eventually stopped, and I just, I want to get back into knowing God and knowing the right from the wrong according to His Word. Exactly, okay, I, 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 I will accept that. All right, um, Sister Angie, 
maybe uh, Romans 1 might not be the one. No. Okay. What about you, Sister Angie? What, about, what is it that you want to learn or understand about God then? Let's put it like that. Messing with my computer as well. So. I want I want the understanding of how, how I can know what God has for me. Okay. What what He wants for me. What He re, I know what He requires for me to walk in Him. Mm -hmm. But uh, what as far as like here on this earth, you know, I know His requirement. His what He wants is for me to witness and to be a you know an example and stuff like that to win the lost. But uh, as far as like when Him Him talking to me and stuff. How, how, how would I know when, or when he is talking to me to do whatever it is that he wants me to do for him? All right. Brother Ray, and make sure you um, translate it. What do you want from God, or what do you want to know from God? ¿Qué es lo que quieres tú de Dios? ¿Qué es lo que... And you all can ask questions too. Mm -hmm. Handout. Oh no, no. Um, I don't have it right now. I have to get up and go get it. But, but it's just right now. It's just Romans one. Turn your Bible to Romans one. No, no, no. Es lo que yo le estaba preguntando a a la hermana. La contestación de la mía fue la hermana que que es mi ¿Qué, ¿Qué es lo que el Señor? Bueno, yo sé que lo que el Señor espera de uno es que quiere que seamos testigos copy, okay. y que quiere que, 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 que hablemos a la gente de, de él y todo eso para que sean salvos. Pero este, mi, mi contestación fue de que uh, ¿qué es lo que, uh, lo que, cómo sé cuando, cómo sé este, cuando Dios está hablando conmigo, está tratando conmigo, ahora como que dice, si me está, si me está moviendo en mí de que de que este, hable una palabra que, estu, que, que enseñe una, un estudio que uh, vaya con ella y que le diga este, uh, una, una escritura que Dios me ha dado para ella porque como veo cuando, cuando es que Dios quiere que yo haga eso y es la pregunta que ella quiere que sea. Bueno, lo siente uno. Uh -huh. Lo siente, lo siente. Porque todo trabaja Dios con la memoria de uno. Te, te, lo sientes aquí. Uh -huh. Lo sientes. Te, lo que lo que Está como, por ejemplo, cuando el, cuando predica ella, cuando predica el hermano. Turn your Bible to Romans chapter Le está dando, le está dando. Aquí, aquí, aquí. Have you pencil and paper ready? You need some paper? No. No, it's what? Esa manera no. No se enseña. Lo que quiere de ti, lo que quiere de mí. Yo pienso que así es. Uno se presta. Lo que quiere Dios es que uno se presta, que le diga y que te da. ¿O no es así? Lo que le van a preguntar. Oh, uh, no, Spanish. Oh, I need the one for Spanish because I'm, um, we're going to start delving in with it. Sister, Sister Kathy, what is it that you want from God or what you, you feel that you need from God? Um, well, the first thing is I want to get to know him better. Okay. Serve him better. Mm -hmm. And get closer All right. to him, do his will. Okay, so what I'm looking at and what I'm hearing is um, knowledge 
you want to have a, a better knowledge about, first of all, who God is and what he is asking of you, correct? Um, how to serve God fully. I mean, how do I serve God today? Is that okay? Um, when we're looking, when when I wanted to start teaching Romans chapter one, I wanted to give you all information. But um, there's some things that that we need to understand when it comes to um, the the is is no such thing for Robin to say there is a full knowledge of God until we get to be with Him. Um, a lot of times. What I see and what I feel people are dealing with is self-esteem. Because when you pray, and, and this is Robin too, do I really fully believe that God is going to do what I'm asking of him? Like when I pray for you, will God open up your knowledge and your understanding? Will God heal you? Will God deliver you? Will God set you free from bounds and chains of whatever it is, of addictions that we have? And so what I'm going to do instead is that I want you to see what God is talking about in Romans chapter 1. I, I want you to see these things because um, I remember this lesson and I'm looking at it, um, the lesson that I taught years ago in regards to the power of uh, the power of your own lies. You tell yourself lies every day. You lie to yourself and you say, I can't. Or, I'm not good enough. You lie to yourself because anything God has asked of you, you can do. Amen. Anything. It doesn't matter what it is. If God says you can, then you can. Mm -hmm. All right? So let's look at this. Let's, 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 I want you to look at, and we're going to go specifically to, um, oh, I thought somebody said to me, oh, I, we want, I want to go specifically to verses 29 through 32 of Romans. Um, is it Romanos? Mm -hmm. All right. Uno. Help him out. Make sure you get something. Because I want us. That's the reason why I wanted my Spanish dictionary, but it's not back here. Ah, let me go look over here. Oh. No, it's not here. Unless I'm going to go look over here. Oh, you still need to come and, um, and get your. Um, your um, yarn with your. Then what, what's new? I got Vinny at home. <laughs> All right. Mr. Wild Boy. You got your thesaurus, Sister Kathy? You don't have your thesaurus, do you? No. Okay, so um, my Spanish dictionary is upstairs. And you don't have your Spanish dictionary with you either? No, I don't. Oh! <laughs> okay. So we're ill prepared for Brother Ray today, but we're going to... Uh, work on the knowledge that Sister Angie and Sister Kathy has in Spanish and the words. So let us read um, verses 29 through 32. I want to read it from the New American Standard Version. Primero um, Romanos. 29. 29. 29 uh, uh, 32. Okay. 29. 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 Okay. 29.
I'm going to want you to read them after we read this in, uh, in American Standard. And I want you guys to, to take note on what it is because we're going to work on certain words in here. All right? It says, um, I'm going to start at verse 28 in the American Standard. It says, and just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer. Okay? To acknowledge God. Because of why, my flesh, I want to do what my flesh wants me to do, is what, is, 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 is what I'm looking at here. But it says, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper. When you're doing something that's dealing with depraved, you're not doing something that is positive, but in a negative, sensual, um, fleshly evilness. It is wrong, okay? My flesh does not want to do good because evil is always around me. And because evil is around me, my flesh is saying, well, I would rather do something that makes my flesh feels good, all right? Mm -hmm. And then our minds decides to play trick on us and say, well, I'm just, I, you know what? I don't want to do this, this holy thing. I don't want to, to deprive myself. I want to feel good. I want to, to be just like everybody else. And being like everybody else is not going to save your soul. Okay? All right. Then it says here in verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness. Okay? Unrighteousness wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful. And these are things that some of us do, okay? Inventors of evil. That's a biggie, and we'll talk about that maybe today, maybe another day. Disobedient to parents without understanding. Note that, without understanding. Untrustworthy, note that. Ugh. Unloving, unmerciful. And although they know the ordinance of God, although you know that God tells us to love, he tells us to forgive, he tells us to be tender-hearted and full of mercy, loving kindness, he tells us to be peaceful. These are the things that God tells us to do, and these are the things that we don't do. All right? He said that those who practice such things are worthy of death. If you're going to have a depraved mind, if you're going to be full of evil and greed, full of envy and murder, strife, deceit, if you're going to do these things, the word of God says that these things are worthy of death. Why? Because they are sinful. It is sin to be this way. They not only do the same, now you're doing it, but listen to what it says but also gave hearty approval to those who practiced them. Now read verses 28 through 32 in Spanish, please. 28 to 32, 28 yes, ma'am. Okay. It says, no a Dios, Dios los entregó a una mente reprobada para hacer cosas que no convienen. Estando atestados de toda injusticia, fornicación, perversidad, avaricias, maldad, llenos de envidia, homicidios, contiendas, engaños y malignades, murmurando, distractores, aborrecidos de Dios, injuriosos, soberbios, altivos, inventores de males desobediente a los padres necios 
Test viales sin defecto natural, impacables, sin misericordia. Quien habiendo entendido el juicio, el juicio de Dios, que los que practican tales cosas no son dignos de muerte, no solo lo hacen, sino que también se complacen con los que las practican. Okay. Okay, ya, let me correct this. A quienes habiendo entendido el juicio de Dios, que los que practican tales cosas son dignos de muerte, no solo la hacen, sino que también se complacen con los que las practican. Ok. Did you understand? All right, good. Uh, yeah. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to take certain words, certain of these words, for some understanding and talk about how it's in here for us mm -hmm. in order for us to get this out. All right, so now write down these words because um, after we go through these, I want you to also study this as well. So write these words down. And then translate. What is um, translate? What is unrighteousness? How do you say unrighteousness in Espanol? Not righteous. No digno. Sinful. Uh, unrighteousness. Yes, ma'am. How do you say unrighteousness or sinful? No, 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 no es digno que acá It's being filled with no all unrighteousness. Uh, unrighteousness que no sea justo. 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 Uh -huh. Wouldn't that be just? And that's My Spanish speakers don't know what the words are, but that's okay. All right? <laughs> so, <laughs> how do you put, well, as um, sinful, Pecado. evil. Um, all right? Okay. This is what we're talking about evil, sinfulness. This is unrighteousness. But I want you to get a better understanding of what unrighteousness is. So by that, I want you to write down Colossians chapter 3, C-O-L. Just C-O-L, period. Mm -hmm. Chapter 3, verses 5 through 10. <laughs> we'll get to that later. All right? Wickedness. Wicked. Marioso. 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 All right. Evil or morally bad in principle or in practice. When you're looking at wickedness, it's, it's like a man going into your garden and spraying um, Roundup. What does Roundup do to plants? Kill them. It kills them. Okay. That's wicked. You're going to trespass on somebody else's property to destroy their property or to steal their property. All right? Covetousness. In Espanol? Covetousness? Yes, ma'am. You can look in your book. I'm pretty sure that it says it. Uh, that's, um, the, yeah, that's versus uh, covetousness, covetousness being filled with all. Verse 29. Romans chapter 1, verse 29. Previsidad, avericia, maldad, menos envidia, mentira, contiendas, engaños, malignades. Okay, now you said malig malignades, mm -hmm. malignity, mm -hmm. all right, all right, but the wickedness was after fornication. Previsidad, covetousness. Covetousness, after wickedness. Um, injusticia, fornicación, perversidad, avesidad. Uh, uh, Coverture means like uh, envy. Mm -hmm. And wanting something Envidioso. that, Envidioso. there you go, that belongs to somebody else. Yeah. All right, it's not yours. It's not yours, and I want it because I don't want you to have it. Mm -hmm. And this is what the devil does. Yes. The devil does not want you to be holy. That's right. So what does he do? 
He steals your peace of mind. Constantly making you look at television, look at a, mo uh, at a, at a, at a magazine, and comparing what you see what to what happen? you are. Mm -hmm. Yes, everybody will love a nice house, right? Oh, yeah. Nice car. And somebody else to drive it for us, to keep it clean, to make sure that it is working order. We want somebody to clean our house for us, wash our clothes, cook our food. As a matter of fact, I want you to buy my food. I want you to pay my bills. Mm. Because that's the lifestyle of the rich and famous, right? And we think that that is, is, is living. But if it was living, why are so many of them committing suicide? Because Satan has stolen their peace of mind. Their hearts is not able to love because a lot of times they're still pulling after stuff that doesn't belong to them. Okay? Full of envy. You're not content. I am not happy because I'm still jealous of what you have. Jealousy, you understand? Mm -hmm. I'm jealous of what you have. These are the things that God wants us to understand. Okay? Let's look at another one. Despiteful. And you got that word, spiteful, in there. You've heard people say she did that or he did that out of spite, right? Mm hmm they did it because they don't want you to be at peace. All right? So, when you look at somebody who is a covenant breaker, peace breaker, I am going to get in between you and Sister Carol here, right? And that's, that's how she calls you, right? I'm going to get in between y'all because I don't want y'all to be happy as friends. All right? A covenant breaker doesn't keep a promise, but they also try to drive a wedge between the relationship mm -hmm. that people have. Mm -hmm. If people have a covenant, that means they've come into an agreement to be at peace. And Satan wants to make absolutely sure that he makes you break your promise. When you married Brother Ray, if you took the vows that a lot of um, us take to love, to honor, mm -hmm. to cherish. We break those bonds when we start arguing, start accusing, start to being disagreeable. We start breaking those bonds. Because what we are looking at is that God has joined you together. When you decided I want to marry him or I want to marry her, however the situation is, and you, you said, I am going to live with this person in peace. Nobody has ever, well, maybe I better not say that. I have never heard anybody say, I'm just going to marry them because, you know, it's just something to do. Usually they want companionship or they want somebody to take care of them, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And they just marry for those reasons. They, they'll say, well, I don't love them. But I'm going to be I'm going to be nice to them and I'm going to marry them and we're just going to have a good relationship. Okay? But you can't have a good relationship with somebody if you're constantly bringing up their past, their past, or if you're constantly arguing with them over nothing. I can take the trash out just as well as my husband can. All right? I can lift the seat up in the bathroom, just as well as he can. Now, the only time I'm going to get irritated with you or with you is if you leave your droppings on my seat. You understand? Because, I mean, you can look back and see if you put some droppings there. When it comes to house cleaning, the wife is supposed to clean the house. Right, America? Or shall we say, right, everybody? That's what we say. But you can pick up after yourself. Just as well as you threw it down there, you can bend down and pick it up yourself. 
You don't have to cause a division in your home because you don't want to pick somebody's stuff up. Okay, Rob, I'm on a peach box now because I want you to learn what peace is. Peace is, I might get irritated and we might have some words. Why, why couldn't you pick that up? I, I just didn't. Okay. And if you know that that individual is like that, you accepted that type of behavior. Mm -hmm. Go on with it. Or ask God to help that individual to be what he or she, because you got some nasty women too, is supposed to be in the home. I'm not here to try and teach you guys because y'all been married longer than I have. You know? So you know, I ain't trying to teach y'all about being married. But what I'm trying to teach you is about peace. Because if you can't have peace in here, you're not going to have peace around you. Because you're always going to be breaking your covenant of peace. Alright? I'm going to leave that alone for right now. Another one is, without natural affection, you have people who are unsociable. They don't want to get along with other people. They don't like other people, so they say, I don't, I don't want to be around them. I'm not going to be around them. And there's nothing you're going to tell me that's going to make me want to be around whoever. Okay? You got some people like that's why they call them recluses. They'll go off to be by themselves. But when you live in the home with someone, be it a sister, brother, mother, father, husband, wife, whatever. You cannot be unsociable. You can't have that natural. I mean, I expect a dog to come up and lick my hand. That's what dogs do. Or a cat to get up and nuzzle up on me. I expect that because that's what they do when they have been what? Socialized. That's what we say. I'm not going to go out there in the woods and expect Yogi the Bear to come up yes. and be all, hello there, oh, come on, boo-boo. I'm not expecting that. If you did, then I'd be running. I, if I see a bear, I'm getting in the wind. Speaking of that, I saw a bear in the wild twice going up to Hurricane Ridge. The first, and it was a baby bear. The first thing we thought about is, where is the mama bear? And I put the pedal to the metal on that, that hill. So, okay. Because she ain't too far behind. No, she's not. And this is the thing. Even animals know how to take care of their own. We are above them. Here's another word I want y'all to get to. Implacable. That's in verse 31. Right after natural affection. Implacable means that you can't be pacified or appeased. Nothing nobody does is ever going to be good enough for you. You can't, somebody comes to you and say, I'm sorry. You're going to continue to want to keep whatever it was stirred up. I don't care if you told me you're sorry. Okay, yes ma'am. That one is not in mine. Can you spell that one for me? I want to make sure I got implacable spelled out. What, what version do you have? I've got the King, New King James Version. Oh, New King James? Yes, That's It's not in verse 31? No. Okay, I am mm -hmm. P-L-A-C-A-B-L-E, mm -hmm. implacable. Thank you. I'll All right, spell you spelled it correct, okay? You got people that cannot be pacified. You know, like the first thing we do with little babies, once they, they get cranky or something, we, we call it swaddling them. We wrap them up, got them there like this. The kid is like, okay, I can't move, so I might as well just shut up. You know. And then you got some babies that's like, you got me wrapped up in here, and I am angry even more so. Then you unwrap them, and you pick them up, and you hold them up to your chest, and you pat them, you rock, right? And that baby is like, no, I'm not happy with this. Then you take the binky, the pass, and you shove it in their mouth and say, just shut this noise up. And they just spit it right out. No, that is not what I want. Until you 
give them the meat, the milk, some leche. Yeah. Then that baby's like, okay, now you got the idea. Now I can, I'm appeased, I'm, I'm pacified because you've given me, you figured out what it is I, I want, really want. You got some individual that want a man or a woman or whoever to bend down and kiss their feet and, and pump them up and make them think that they are the everything. And that is not of God. You cannot be like that and be a child of God. You've got to be able to accept some things, okay? Now, I, I gave y'all Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 10, right? Yes, for unrighteousness. Right. So Colossians is after Galatians and Ephesians, right? Let me see here. After Philippians. So after Romans, you're going to go past Romans. You're going to go past the Corinthians. I got it. If you get, okay. I'm, get, I'm learning them again. Okay. Uh, help Brother Ray with Colossi. Colossi. Philippians is three. All right. Um, it's All right. That's why I cheated and made my little marks. <laughs> there you go. Me with All right. So let's mark on, on your paper there. That's another one. Oh, y'all don't have it. So Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 10. Yes. All right? Because then we're going to get to the part where it talks about the results of sin. You are, you imagine evil things. You're not righteous. You can't be satisfied. You don't have natural affections. And, and even in the book of Romans, when you looked at Romans chapter 1, you saw where it talked about how they took the things of, of natural order and made it unnatural. Um, when we talk about the sensual part of mankind, when we talk about the sexual part of mankind, the sexual part deals with male-female relationships. Now... As, as in Romans chapter 1, it showed that the women got rid of their natural affection for the man. The man got rid of his natural affection for the woman. And they have this, this type of relationship that goes against what God intended it for. All right? So when somebody say, well, are you against? I'm not against anything but sin. If the Bible calls it sin, then that's, that's what I'm against. Okay? I'm against a married couple going outside of their home to receive affections from somebody else. You need to be able to receive your affections from home. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? If I don't know how to treat my husband in a respectful, loving um, manner at home, how do I expect him to, to not to receive it um, outside of the home? That's right. Because the devil, what he's going to do is that he is going to put in, in his mind, or he can, all right, that, well, if I don't receive the love and affection or the attention at home that I want, then I'm going to go find it somewhere else, okay? It doesn't have to be sexual. It can just be, you know, hey, um, how about we go out for a cup of coffee? Decent conversation. Yeah, I, yeah, without somebody chewing and tearing me down. Exactly. Okay? If I want somebody to chew and tear me down, I can look in the mirror and do a real good job. Yeah. yeah. All right? So, when we are we going to read Colossians, you got it? Chapter 3, verses 5 through 10. Okay? Chapter 3 of, of the book of Colossians. You got it in Espanol? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read that, please. Hacer morir, pues, lo terrenal en vosotros. Fornicación, impureza, pasión desordenada, malos deseos y avaricia, que es idolatría. Cosas por la cual la ira de Dios viene sobre los hijos de desobediencia, en las cuales vosotros también anduviste en otros tiempos cuando vi, vi, vivía en ella pero ahora deja también pues vosotros todos estas cosas
cosas. Ira, enojo, malicia, blasfemia, palabras deshonestas de vuestras bocas. No mientas los unos a los otros, haciéndonos despojados del viejo hombre con, su, con sus hechos y revestidos de nuevo, del nuevo, el cual conforme a la imagen del que lo crió se va renovando hasta el conocimiento pleno. All right. You want to read it. Um, you want to read it, Susanji. Uh, Colossians 5, uh, 3 to 10, uh, yeah. 5 to 10. Right. Mortify therefore your members mm -hmm. which are upon the earth fornication, uncleanliness, and ordinate infection, mm -hmm. evil conspicuous, con, 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 Covetousness. Yeah, that. Uh huh. And covetousness, which is idolatry. Right. For which things, for things sake, the wrath of God cometh on, on the children of disobedience, in which ye also walk sometime when ye live in them. All right. But mm -hmm. now ye also put off all of put these. Off of these. Listen to this. This is verse 8. Anger, mm -hmm. wrath, right. malice, mm -hmm. blasphemy, mm -hmm. filthy communication out, out of, of your, your mouth. mouth. All right. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man in his deeds, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. knowledge after the image of him that created him. <clears throat> okay. So now you're getting a better understanding of number one, what God requires of you. Okay. What is it that God requires of you? If we look at that again, if we look at uh, verse nine, he says to put off these things and he, he, he's, um, he's giving you examples of, of things to put away from you. All right? Mm -hmm. But let's go ahead on and look at this. What does mortify mean? This is Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 10. Okay? Mortify, he says, to put to death these things concerning sin. All right? These are the things of the earth. These are the things that keep you separated from God. When you practice them, all right. Um, never mind, I was gonna say something, but I, I, I'm gonna keep that. She read in verse 5 to mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, and he and he gave us these things, okay. So, when you look at the uh, fornication part, you're looking at the unlawful sexual intercourse with an unwed person, okay, all right. Now, today's society says if it's not hurting anybody, we should leave it alone, right? Mm -hmm. Or today's society says if it feels good, go ahead and do it. Well, in today's society, if you follow up with what they're telling you to do, you're going to wind up in hell. Fornication is wrong regardless. Your body was created as a temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay? That's what your body is for. The voices that you should be listening to should be the voice of God and God only. When somebody is telling you to go and do the wrong thing, then that is not of God. All right? What did you find? It says mortify. It says mm -hmm. humiliate, mm -hmm. embarrass, mm -hmm. shame, humble, disgrace. Dismay, mm -hmm. deflate, bring down, take down a notch, belittle. Okay. When you do this, that means that you're not going to want to fornicate. All right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to be unclean. And 
And look at it this way. You know, somebody might say as well, when you're talking about unclean, what exactly are you talking about? It could be talking about your physical body. Mm -hmm. um, the Word of God wants us to be clean in all things, in all ways and in all manners. And if you don't keep your body clean, you open and subject yourself to diseases. All right? I said, and the Word of God does tell us this, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, if you don't keep your body healthy, clean, then you're dishonoring the temple that God can fill his spirit in. Of course, your physical body is going to go is going to die and it's going to go back to the dust. We know that. Mm -hmm. But while you have possession of it, you need to take care of your body. Eating right, drinking the right things. Keeping it healthy, as healthy as you can. Getting up, walking, Robin. Yes, sir, I hear you. Get up and walk. Exercise your body. Take your hands and move them like that sometimes. The physical therapist told me to bend my hands, all right? All of that, yes. But don't listen to what the world says in the negative manner, all right? Uncleanliness in this manner is sexual perversion between man and woman. You got some individuals in the church that want you to do things that is not appropriate for those of the saints of the Most High God. Now, whatever that is, if it ain't natural and normal, you might have to leave your thing alone. And I'm just going to give you a few words here because these are things that does happen to people in the church. Sometimes sisters or brothers are raped. Mm -hmm. Okay? That means somebody take their body forcefully, without permission. Sometimes you have um, an individual that wasn't true. That's why they tell you not to be unequally yoked in a marriage. Because you don't know what that individual's desires could possibly be all right you can have somebody that turns out to be a pedophile you young um, people who are getting married over again um, you have children and I'm not just saying women because um, you know the young women want to get married again after they failed marriage or husband dies whatever the situation it can be a woman who is a pedophile so you have to be careful, okay? And I'm just going to leave that alone right there because I got some other stuff, but all right. The, the, the scripture said inordinate affection. Listen to this. Too great of love or friendly feeling or an uncontrolled passion, okay? I'm going to keep on going on that. I have a scripture that I can give you. As a matter of fact, hold your finger on Colossians chapter 3. But let's go to the Old Testament. And we're going to go into um, 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel is before Kings. All right. So 2 Samuel chapter 13. Second Samuel chapter 13, verses 11 through 16. We're talking about inordinate affection, all right? Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 11 through 16, all right? Now, y'all going to see something here, all right? Biblical. See, I'm going to keep it in the book. Second Samuel chapter 13. Verses 11 through 16. I could tell the story, but I'm going to read it. Dealing with Tamar and Amnon, David's two children. It says, And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister, which it was his biological sister, not from the same mother, but from the same father. 
And she answered, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. And I, whether shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Now, the girl trying to talk her way out of this. Because back in that time, sisters and brothers could get married. Cousins could get married. First, second, and third cousins could get married. So there was no need for him to force himself upon her. This is in order affection. This guy was so bent on physically having this girl that he violated her. Go on to verse 14. Howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. That is rape. That is incest. Okay? And now look at verse 15 and 16. Now this is, this, this is where you want to choke him out. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherein he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. Now, this is inordinate affection that led to rape, incest, and hatred. Okay? This is what I'm talking about, inordinate affection. All right? And we're going to move from there unless you have questions. You don't see any. Okay? The next word was evil concupiscence, which is an intense longing for what God would not have us to have. And they said, now, Sister Brooks, do you have a scripture dealing with that? Y'all should y'all should be asking that. What, what does that mean? What's that? Evil concupiscence. I'm gonna go to Titus, the third chapter, and it's intense longing, concupiscence. It's um for something that God. I mean, it's the same as coveting. All right, but in Titus three and three, it says here, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived. Here's a good one. Serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hatred and hating one another. Now, when we're looking at this thing, let's, I'm, I'm going to read what um, Amplified says here. Amplified of Titus 3.3 3 says, for we also were once thoughtless and senseless, obstinate and disobedient, deluded and misled. We too were once slaves to all sorts of cravings and pleasures, wasting our days in malice and jealousy and envy, hateful, which is hated and detestable and hating one another. We don't want the good things that God has for us. We want what we want. We want what the what pleases the flesh. Is what I have mm -hmm. Is is uh when you're well of course when you're married and stuff like that. Is too much sex wrong? Is there such thing as too much sex? Okay. Are you able to clean your house? Are you able to get dressed and go and, and do the things that is necessary in your home? Are you are you going to work? <laughs> are you staying at home and in the bed the whole time? Okay, if you can answer those questions, yes or no, then maybe it's not too much. Or maybe it is too much. Okay? How can I answer that question? I don't know. Yeah, I'm married. <laughs> I'm married. She said, her question was, is there a such thing as a married person saying there's too much sex? And I said, are you able to clean your house? Are you able to go to work? Are you able to cook? 
Um, or, you know, those, those are things, okay, you understand? Do you have a home? Is that all you think about? For some people, that's all they think about. And they neglect everything else. So are you neglecting um, everything else? You see? So am I going to answer? Thank you, Sister Tanya. Okay. Sister Tanya is laughing at us. <laughs> Those are the answers right there. there, you, there you, there's your answer. I can't tell you what's, what's you know, hey, it, the flesh says, I want this itch scratched. So, if you're able to keep house and get it scratched, I say scratch on. <laughs> but if you're not able to keep house and keep food in your home, keep a roof over your head, keep the car running, keep gas in your car, I say you better temper yourself. Okay, y'all might think that you, anybody online is, okay, Tanya. <laughs> Not scratch away. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. For the simple reason is that who can who can we say um, uh, what's normal for other people's homes? Mm -hmm. Okay. For some people, it's normal to just neglect everything else and just do that. <laughs> but if you find yourself in poverty for it, then you have. Neglected your home. I'm leaving the rest of that for y'all to find out for yourselves. Now, hmm, covetousness, excessive desire of what belongs to somebody else. You can even get to the place where you think, oh, Brother Brooks is so good. Oh, my goodness. I want a husband like Brother Brooks and all that kind of stuff. And you need to ask Sister Brooks what kind of husband Brother Brooks is first before you go coveting my husband. Because y'all might not be able to deal with the aggravation that I deal with. Oh, Sister Brooks, Pastor Brooks is not aggravating. He is to me. But I love his aggravation. So, you know, you might not love his aggravation. But I, will, I love my husband's aggravation. You understand? Because I love him. So, therefore, God has placed in me... What he, what Brother Brooks needs as a wife, who is going to tolerate his, his, That's right. him, and then Brother Brooks tolerates me, because I'm not the easy person to live with. I am a clutter bug. I know that. And that's all I'm going to have to say about that. <laughs> okay. Now, here you go. Anger. Understand what anger truly is first. And then understand why you're angry all the time. All right? Anger says it's a strong feeling of displeasure, emotional excitement induced by intense displeasure. Some people can't let go of the past because they're still angry about what happened back then yesteryears remember uh-huh remember what i said about implacable what did i say implacable was were y'all listening yeah. what is implacable huh you just told us to write it down but i also told you what it was remember the baby that was wrapped up swaddled got a pacifier and that was not what it wanted frustrated exactly frustrated cannot be pleased I am not going to forgive you for what you did 20 years ago. You're wrong. You're just as wrong as two left feet with two pairs of white right shoes on. You're wrong. If you can't forgive, how do you expect God to forgive you? Turn to Matthew. What was that? Where is that at? Matthew. Oh, let me, let me, let me put my ink pen there. I think it's in Matthew. Isn't it Matthew 6? Yeah, I believe that's it. Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. Write that down. Matthew 6. 6, verses 14 through 16. Did you write it down? Mm -hmm. It says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, 
your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Now, I'm just going to give you what the word says now. Then verse 15 says, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, he hurt me, he, he, um, he hit me, he, he lied to me, he, she uh, went out on me, she, yeah, they did all of that. Do you still want your marriage? You do? Okay, then you're going to have to forgive it and let it alone. Don't wash his or her face with it. Well, um, Sister Angie stole my money. I said, just beat her down real good. No, don't beat her down. But you're going to have to forgive it. If she did that 20 years ago, you need to leave it alone. Sister Angie, do you hear what I'm saying? If it was done in the past and you didn't do anything about it then, why are you still chewing on that piece of gristle in 2017? That's right. Spit the gristle out or swallow it. That's what I say. The Bible tells you that if you forgive not men their trespasses, I'm, again, Matthew chapter 6, verse 15, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you of yours. So what are you doing? What rules are you breaking? Number one, you're not able to be appeased. Number two, you're hating. Number three, you got malice. Isn't that what we talked about in Romans chapter one? Y'all following me? Yes. Yep. Okay. So you see, these are the th this is what God desires of you. This is what's in your heart that you need to deal with. I can't tell you how to be saved if you're still wrapped into the flesh. I got to first tell you what the sin is so that you could go, I didn't know that that was a sin. And now with that knowledge, you're able to turn it loose. Forgive. You got to be able to forgive. Okay, so, Kelly, you weren't here, so you didn't see him, and I didn't bring him. So, example for me would be those pictures of the car accident. Okay, who are you mad at? I'm not mad. Okay. But I'm going to say my ex-husband is mad because it was my fault. Okay, that's his problem. That's his problem. Did you, when you woke up from your coma, did you, did you tell him, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it? I don't remember what I said. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Once you've asked a person to forgive you, that's it. Leave it alone. Now, can you change his behavior? No, I tried. Then leave it alone. See, the thing that a lot of people try to do is that they try to change somebody to be what they want them to be. My goodness, y'all looking at the square peg that everybody was trying to fit in the round hole. I got a girlfriend. She's online right now. Sister Creola Washington. You remember how I used to dress? Creola was and still is the dresser. Creola, oh my goodness. She robbed how I look. I said, man, I wouldn't wear that to a dog fight because it didn't suit my personality. But Creola kept dealing with me and next thing I know, I started making clothes that were suitable for Robin. You see? Mm -hmm. I can't be Criola. I can only be Robin. Amen. Am I right, Criola? Talk to me if you're still there. So these are the things. The thing that we need to do as men and women of God. We got to acknowledge first and foremost what it is that we're holding on to and turn that thing loose. This is what keeps us bound. You remember the song that I sang? Um, I am free, no more chains holding me. Why? Because I let the past go. Did you hear what I said in Matthew 6? 15, no, what is it, 14 and 15? If I want God to forgive me, I have to be willing to forgive you. I have to be willing to forgive you. 
Sister Kathy, I have to be willing to forgive you. I got to be willing to forgive you. You understand? And stop all of this. Well, I got to forgive myself. Who are you? If God says that you have asked me to forgive you, oh God, hop, Jesus, I'm feeling this thing right now. Amen. If God says that I have forgiven you and your sins, I will not remember them no more. Because Amen. why? You repented. You said, God, I don't know all the sins that I've committed against you, God. So I'm asking you, God, to forgive me. And when God forgives you, you are forgiven. Okay? Can I, um, Do, does he keep washing your face with your sins? No. Nope. Then that's the answer to everything. Anger is sinful. Can I um, read that in Spanish? Please. In el, el capítulo 6, versículo 14, dice, Porque si perdonáis a los hombres sus ofensas, os perdonará también a, vos, a vosotros vuestro Padre Celestial. Mas si no perdonáis a los hombres sus ofensas, tampoco vuestro Padre os perdonará. Okay, that was Matthew 6. All right. Now, going back to Colossians, because I wanted you to see what Colossians chapter 3 was really saying. Remember when, I, when we read it again, verse 8, it says, But now ye also put off these things. You got to let anger go. You got to let wrath, which is rage, vengeful. I want revenge, God. He did this, she did this. I want revenge. You understand what I'm saying? You're welcome, Audrey. I want revenge. God said, put that away from you. Okay, maybe you didn't hear me. God said, put that away from you. That's what he said in the book of Colossians chapter 3. All right? God also says, put away, this is verse 8, malice. What is malice? Spite. Ill will. Did you read Colossians 3 to Brother Ray? I, yes, did. Okay. You got you to gotta, um, put that away. And y'all know what blasphemy is because we've, we've studied that before. But if you haven't, it says, put away blasphemy. Stop insulting or trying to show contempt to God and reverence him as your savior. You need to stop that. That's blasphemy. Oh, when you say those little cute little cuss words that with God's name in it. You need to stop that, darling. Okay? Because you're not showing God the respect that's due him. The creator of the universe. The creator of our lives. All right? And then, she, and then verse 8 says, Put away filthy communication out of your mouth. Now, hmm. <laughs> Woo! Verse, uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. Four. Matthew chapter 12. Mateo. Mateo. I have a question. Wait a minute. Let's, let's, let's follow this. Let's follow this until, until God finish with it. Put this filthy communication out of your mouth. Matthew 12 and 34. Matthew 12 and 34. And then we're going to go to your question. Oh, generation of vipers. He's calling y'all a snake. Oh, calling you a snake. He says, how can ye be in evil, speak good things, forked tongue? He says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in your heart? Unforgiveness, 
then your mouth is going to speak unforgiving things. What's in your mouth? I mean, in your heart. Hatred? Then you're going to speak hatred, hateful things. What's in your mouth? What's in your heart? What's in there? Well, for right now, for what I was just, what I was talking about, mm -hmm. it, and it comes every year since then, mm -hmm. at Christmas time, that hatred of that accident. And? And I, every time as it gets closer, mm -hmm. right in October, it starts hitting me. Mm -hmm. Been there, done that. And I don't know how to let it go and let God take it over. Okay, if I give you some fire, a hot coal, a, 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 a brisk, a, what it brisket that I took off of the off of the um out of the fire, and I mm -hmm. put it in your hand, will you hold it? No. Then that's what it is. It's the same thing. That is a fire that is consuming you. That is a fire that, right. and trust me, Christmas time for years since I was the age of fourteen. Until I was in my 20s, starting in October, November, when they start singing those Christmas carols, man, I'd get angry all over again. Why? Because of something that happened to me. Something somebody said and something somebody did to me. I don't know if Audrey remember when I left Lexington, but I left Lexington. So when I left Lexington, I left Lexington as an angry teenager. A hurt teenager. So every time during that time of the year, I would get angry all over again. Yeah, I get the anger, I get the sad. Cause exactly. And do you know? Think of it as that charcoal brisket that is on fire. Are you going to rub that in your bosom? No. Then you need to turn it loose. Is it something that you can take, that you can fix now? No. Then you need to turn it loose. If you can't fix it, turn it loose. And give it to the person who can fix it. And that's God. So I've got to just, I've got, I've got to figure out how I can let it go. Exactly. And then you will be able to let it go. But only the love of God can help you to let it go. See, anger and hatred and hurt is something that only God can minister to you. Nobody else can minister that thing to you. I can't, if I could, if I could tell you how to let it go, I would be more than happy to take. Right. The only thing I can tell you is this. If you can't fix it, if nobody else in this room can fix it, turn it over to God and say, God, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to fix it. And God will tell you in your spirit. He'll say, you just let me take care of this. And it's a done deal. Because now you've released it to God. Yes, ma'am. You were going to say something, Sister Kathy. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was going to say, you see something? All right. All that trouble. Mm hmm And it keeps coming back and everything. I, For me, I think you have to look in, your, in the mirror and forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for whatever made uh, that accident, caused that accident. And... Forgive yourself for uh, blaming yourself. Because I almost you're, killed. Because mm -hmm. you're, you're blaming yourself. You're holding that inside you. And you have to ask God to help you forgive. And uh, if uh, for some reason or another, let's say you were mad or you were driving or or whatever was a problem that uh, made you blind and... Well, wanna... see, this is the thing, sister. The thing of it is, is that it's something that has happened in the past mm -hmm. and there is nothing she can do about it. Yeah. It has happened. It is. Uh, That's the same as, as, as um, when Jerry has fell out of the crib, bumped his little knot. I was just, I called myself an unfit mother, I was rather to cash in my chips and just say, you know, let's just get rid of them because I don't know what I'm doing. Accidents happen. Right. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing we can do about an accident. You can be 
doing 100% everything correctly and still reach in the oven and burn your arm. Got a scar to prove it. I was cooking, um, um what yeah, is it? Um, and, and I love them. Peanut butter cookies. Oh, I was, I was doing it. I had done it time and time and time and time and time. And I reached my arm in the oven, burnt myself, and stopped making the, the peanut butter cookies for years. Wouldn't make them. <laughs> Wouldn't make them because I burnt my arm. Was I doing everything correctly? Yes. It just was an accident. So if God has says that he's forgiven you, if you've asked God to forgive me, that's the same as look, you look at your husband and say, Ray, you know, I'm sorry for being such an aggravating wife, but I'm your aggravating wife. Love me. And he said, you know I love you, Katarina. And how he calls you, Kat Katarina. Mm. He, he tells you he loves you. And then you, Brother Ray says, you know, Kathy, forgive me for, for, for whatever I was back before we, we found Christ. And you say, oh, yes, I forgive you. Because is he like that today? Or are you like, you like what you was 40, 50, 60 years ago today? Mm -mm. No. And so this is what you do. Sister Angie, I'm sorry. And really me, I am sorry. And don't be the same person you was yesterday. Mm -hmm. You see, these are the things that a lot of people don't understand when God wants you to be your best. He will equip you and give you the knowledge to be who it is that he wants you to be. I forgot to look to see what time it is. What time is it, y'all? Let me see. Uh, oh, oh, we're going over. No, uh, no, you guys can go ahead. I have to go meet that guy that's going to do my wage deal. Okay. Uh, at 12.30, you have to leave. All right. But so, well, <coughs> I'll, you want me to keep, sister? Um, hey, if you want all right, to, I'll keep her. I know, where she, I know where she live at. Yeah, that's fine. See, these are, this is, this is, this is why a lot of times we tell our own selves lies. And we, we tell ourselves we can never be forgiven. We tell ourselves, I won't ever forgive them. I ain't going to forget it. And so now let's look at the consequences of your sins. All right. If we go on, uh, um, for those of you that have to leave, go ahead on. But all right. So <clears throat> you know what's what is sin? There's something that's wrong, right? That's what sin is. So let us go to the hundred and seventh division of Psalms, Psalms one oh seven. Psalms one oh seven. And verse 17. <laughs> that was just pitiful. You suffer affliction because of their iniquities or because of your sin. 107.17 says here in NIV, Some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. Because of you rebelling against God or because of you turning your back against God or because of your sins, you're going to suffer for it. All right? You're going to suffer for it. You reading it in, um, <clears throat> do you have it in your Spanish book? Read it for him, Sister Kathy. Salvo, uh, 107, versículo 17, dice, Fueron afligidos los insensatos a causa del camino de su rebelión y a causa de su maldad. Su alma abominó todo alimento y llegaron hasta las puertas de la muerte. Pero clamaron a Jehová en su angustia y los libró de su all right, just 17, okay. just verse 17. Okay, turn to Psalms 51, the 51st division of Psalms. Psalms 51 and verse 3. See, I want you to know what the result of your sins are. 
you've already uh, we've already told you or shown you what sin is, correct? So now that you know what sin is, now what is the result of that sin? Samos. Yeah. 51.3, it says this. It says, for I acknowledge my transgressions, or I am conscious of it, or I know what my transgressions are. All right? And my sin is ever before me. You already know what it is. You know that you have a problem with anger. You know you got a problem with being a thief. You know you got a problem with being a murderer. You know what it is. It's ever before you. So that's what God does. He brings it to your, to your, you know, right in front of you. To the forefront. To the forefront. It's not going to be hidden anymore. I want you to know, I want to show you what is keeping you and me separated is what God is saying. You being angry all the time. You stealing all the time. You murdering all the time. Where's a, did I talk to somebody that's a liar yet? You lying all the time. You, you see what I'm saying? So he's going to bring it before you so that you see what it is. Now, I know what my sin is, God. I'm sorry. Forgive me and keep me from this. This Am I helping you? Is anybody getting this? Yeah. Yeah. All right. And if, okay. and if God brings it before you, it's something that you're, never, you're not going to be able to say, well, I didn't know. Exactly. Because God already had showed you. And now you you're accountable it. for it. All right, let's go to Isaiah 59. Now, this one here, and I think we ought, to, we ought to get off of here. But anyway, Isaiah 59, verse 2. I might just read verse 1 on this. Because, uh -oh, let me see. So when the sister says that as soon as you let it go, you'll be surprised how blessed you will be. Once you, once you, once you find out what it is that is keeping you bound, when you find out what it is and you release that thing to God, you say, God, I don't know how to handle this anymore here. And God takes care of it for you. Oh my goodness. It's such a relief. Oh, uh, 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 anyway. Isaiah 59, I'm going to read verse 1 along with this. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. What you got, what problem do you have that, that is so, um, I can't tell God because I'm so embarrassed. Mm -hmm. He knows it. He knows it. Because <laughs> you done told him. By your actions. Okay? And he sees everything. And he's, that's it. So here he says, but your iniquities, your sins, okay, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. God is not going to hear you if you're going to continue in your sin. I'm going to continue to be mad, Lord. Mm -mm. Well, then die your sin. There you go. I'm going to continue to have all this malice and this hatred in my heart, Lord. Like I told y'all, if I, I know I'm an aggravating woman. But if Brother Brooks loved me, then I, I'm his aggravating woman. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't want him or, you know, for yourself. Because you don't know how he is, you know, he's dealing with me. He loves me because I'm who I am. And the same thing around and around about. I love that man. But if he sins against me, he's got to deal with God. If I sin against him, I have to deal with God. And then if we still have love, we need to forgive. That's right. If I go to him and say, I'm sorry I did such and such, and if he's willing to remain with me because of whatever that such is, it could have been that I didn't wash dishes and that was the last straw that broke the camel's back. And he says, you know what? He grabbed me by the scruff of my neck and booted me out the house. Did that? You know what? I have to deal with that. 
And then he's got to deal with it too. If we're righteous people, God says your iniquities have separated me and you. He didn't say, Sister Kathy, because Sister Kathy ran into your car. He mm -hmm. said, He's going to deal with Sister Kathy. Mm -hmm. You, you, your actions, your whatevers is yes. what separates me from, from, from you, is what God is saying. So we need to stop allowing the past to keep bringing all kinds of mess into our today. Right. We need to let it go. And let us do uh, one more. Uh, can I write, uh, can I read, uh, uh, Psalms 53 for them, and, and then the... Go ahead. 53? I mean, 50, 51. 51 and 3? 51 and 3. Go ahead and read it. It says, in Psalms 51, 3, it says, Porque yo reconozco mis rebeliones, y mi, peca y mi pecado está siempre delante de ti. Entonces, la, la, la confesión del pecado de Israel, dice, en la... Um, en 59 del 1 al 2 que leyó ella, dice, He aquí que no se ha acordado, acortado la mano de Jehová para salvar, ni se ha agravado su odio, su oído para oír. Pero vuestras iniquidades han hecho división entre vosotros y vuestro, y vuestro Dios, y vosotros... Vuestros pecados han hecho ocultar de vosotros su rostro para no oír. All right, go to Romans chapter 6, verse 23, and that'll be our last one because we've been here over an hour. We've been teaching over an hour, so. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And, um... I think I'm going to start off at verse 20, okay? Romans chapter 6, and we will end with discussion on that. Romans chapter 6, verse 20 says, For when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. Ain't that something? You're a sinner, so you don't have to be righteous, is what, is, is what he said right there. You were free from it. What fruit had you then in those things where you are now ashamed? We've done some things in our sin that even today we're ashamed that we did it. It's like, man, I can't believe I allowed myself to do it. That's what you should be saying. Mm -hmm. Not that I did it. I allowed myself because we made the choice to do it. That's right. All right? But he says, for the end of those things is death. Then he went to verse 22 and he says, But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So verse 23 then says, if you want to get paid, he says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All right? And I'm going to want you to read that to Brother Ray. In Romanos 6, verse 20, 20, mm -hmm. 23, dice, Porque cuando eres esclavo del pecado, eres libre acerca de la justicia. Pero, ¿qué frutos tendréis de aquellas, aquellas cosas de las cuales ahora os avergonzáis? Porque el fin de ellas es muerte. Mas ahora que habéis sido librado del pecado y he hechos 